The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. I now shall call. Live you must, and let to live. Fairly take, and fairly give. Do what thou will, if it harms none. By the magic of all, may it be done. Nine woods in the cauldron go, as above, so below. Welcome to Stirring the Cauldron on the Para-X Radio Network. And now, here's your host, Marla Brooks. Hey, Mary Mead, everybody, and welcome to Stirring the Cauldron. The opening music tonight was by Midnight Syndicate, and it's called Return of the Apparition. And as we all know, apparitions return in a variety of ways, and one of those ways is verbally, and sometimes even through a ghost box. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight with my guest, Greg Bakken, who is a seasoned paranormal investigator and intuitive and the founder of the Minnesota Ghost Box Um, a paranormal team which is based out of Minneapolis and his favorite method of communicating with spirits is through the spirit box and um, it's also called a ghost box it's got many names and we'll talk about that in a minute and he's been very fortunate to get a lot of good spirit responses using the device over the years so he's very passionate about bridging the gap between the metaphysical and paranormal by bringing together mediums and paranormal investigators to work together to help each other validate communication and share information. And in addition to investigating cool and active locations, he's also the host of the popular radio show Ghost Box Radio, broadcasting live on KCOR Digital Radio. Now, on Ghost Box Radio, he interviews guests about the paranormal, UFOs, Bigfoot, and more. And he also runs an organization called Para Friends Events, that educates people interested in the paranormal on how to compassionately investigate tonight, uh, locations and speak to spirits. So tonight we're going to be talking, as I said, about ghost boxes. And we're also going to let you hear some really good audio clips that he sent over. So we've got a lot of things going on tonight. And for those of you in the Para-X chat room, feel free to send along questions or comments during the show. And if you're not here in chat, you better be to ask or comment. So join us at paraxradionetwork.com and click on the chat room. So Greg, welcome. Hi Marla, how are you doing tonight? Doing really well. Looking forward to talking about ghost boxes. I mean, they're really an interesting topic and I, you know, I think I told you this before. I don't think I've ever done a show about them. So, I figured after all these years it's about time that I did. <laughs> so, I think to begin, um, let's do a little backstory on you. When were you first introduced to the concept of a ghost box or the box itself? I was uh, introduced to it some time ago now. It's been about eight or nine years. And, uh, you know, I hate to say it because, I mean, sometimes you do end up uh, seeing stuff on TV and you want to emulate it because I wasn't really a part of the paranormal scene back then. What I was doing was I was watching some of the shows. I was kind of... And then I saw a few people using what, you know, we call it spirit box, we call it ghost box, we call it, you know, other things. 
And I thought to myself, you know, if, if you know, a little bit more stepping back just a, a, a little bit, for those who don't know, a spirit box basically is a radio that scans through radio frequencies without stopping at a station. So the theory behind it is that spirits can use the energy and the, and, and the static that's coming from the spirit box, from this radio, and talk to you in real time. You know, not like a conversation you and I have, but, you know, they do, that you do get responses when you ask for questions. And when I started seeing that on different programs and stuff, I thought to myself, this is something I'd actually really like to get involved with. I'd like to see if I could do this myself, because it just seems too tantalizing not to try and actually speak to a spirit, whether it's someone you're related to, or if it's somebody who you just want to see, you know, who's here, I want to talk to. So, flash forward maybe a couple years after i first heard of it i had a friend at work and we live we we live we work in a it seems like we live there sometimes doesn't it? <laughs> um we we work at this building that was built in 1916 and we've heard a lot of stuff happening there so i uh i, I told my friend you know what he because he worked in texas and he'd come up uh once in a while and work with all of us i said next time you're in town I'm going to get a spirit box, and we're going to try this. And uh, what ended up happening is I went to that you know, hugely amazing paranormal uh, surplus store called Amazon. And uh, <laughs> I, I didn't know anything. I didn't know there was any other places. But they had it, so why not? Got a spirit box. My friend came in. We went down to this basement, which we call the creepy basement, turned it on, and just like, you know, you know this isn't going to work, but... Is there anybody here that uh, will talk to us? Can I get a name, please? And I'll send you here, Nate. <laughs> like, okay. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm actually getting kind of goosebumps even thinking about it right now because it just kind of started to blow our mind immediately. And I'm like, uh, do, you, do you have a last name? And all of a sudden, Lund came through. And uh, we, you know, started talking to this guy a little bit. And then uh, we... We're like, well, is there anyone else here? And then a female voice came through, and she's like, hello. And we're like, wow, this thing is working for us. And and the thing about spirit boxes, depending on what you get, there's a lot of different kinds that you can get. We ended up you know, starting off with what I would call a mass-produced version. It's called the SB7. And the frequency, you can, you can scan through all the frequencies so fast, you're not picking up really radio programs or anything you're really just getting a lot of white noise mm-hmm. a lot of people don't like that i do like it and you get you get this white noise so there wasn't there wasn't any other radio stations uh popping through and these were what we call intelligent responses and from that moment on i was extremely hooked on the concept of the spirit box well you know the first time i heard about any sort of box at all i mean way back when um was when people were standing in line to get a particular radio shack radio yes. that they converted into the ghost box which was referred to as the shack hack yes. um <laughs> was that did that come before the ones that they could buy already hacked or what was the genesis of these boxes do you know i mean these, these boxes i mean they go back i mean i think probably one of the most famous uh people to put them together was frank supton uh who uh came up with you know the frank's box and he mm-hmm. put together these boxes and he he didn't put them together to make money he put them together because he really firmly believed in the idea of of speaking with spirits and uh, really wanted to do right by the field and uh you know there's other people who've done them now there's a lot of people who make them the the shack you know i i from my potted history of of knowing about it i would say that you know there's been people experimenting with this sort of uh, what we call ITC technology, you know, intratransmental communication, meaning getting getting any kind of voices and any kind of uh, responses from from basically electronics. And, you know, you have Frank Sumpton who is making these boxes and there's a, a number of them that he had given away. He never I, he may have charged for parts or something but from my understanding he he never really charged for them unfortunately now they're showing up on ebay for you know anywhere from four hundred dollars to a thousand dollars if not more <laughs> um a lot of people swear that this is the best his boxes are the ones to really go for and it's around that time too that people are realizing that some of these radio shack uh radios that were around in the 1990s and also sanjean radios i mean i think that all of these 
all of these people, uh, all these radios were actually from kind of the same design. It's just that they had different names to them. So there's a lot of people who are going in and, and hacking the ability for when you're doing a scan on the radio that they stop at the radio station. Instead, they keep going through. And some of the stuff I'm going to play tonight is going to actually be from a sand gene, basically a shack hack, um, because there's you get some really good stuff. My only my only thing with that is sometimes you have to kind of figure out, are you listening to radio? Are you listening to someone giving you an intelligent response? Because sometimes the radio, the, what you're hearing on the radio is actually, I believe that is actually the response you're supposed to hear. It's, it's very interesting how uh, there's a lot of different angles you can take while listening back to uh, responses from any spirit box. And, you know, some people also, you might want to talk about the difference between uh, spirit boxes, uh, what you get on spirit box and EVP. Well, and that's that's a good point. And, you know, a lot of people, I've heard people call responses from spirit box um, EVPs because, in a sense, it is electronic voice phenomenon. That's what EVP stands for. I personally put them in two different categories, an EVP um I think what most people consider EVPs to be is if you are, you know, in a room and you're recording audio and you're asking spirit questions and then you play back that audio and you hear your your voice and then you hear a response to your question that you did not hear when you were asking that question originally, which, you know, that's pretty exciting. That is that is an amazing thing. And, And sometimes you can get that being, you know, what they call class A EVP, which is very clear, very, uh, very rotund, very, very uh, strong response. Other times it's going to be, you know, maybe just, you know, harder to hear, but you can still hear it and you know you didn't hear it at the time that you're recording. Um, in my mind, the difference then is that you're listening to it live, you're getting the responses. You know, hopefully you're getting the responses. And then you have the the fun of taking that recording, going back and listening to it. Because sometimes you're gonna be you're gonna be there in the moment and you're gonna hear all sorts of things that is answering your questions, it's it's doing what you want to hear, it's pretty exciting, only to realize that uh you you didn't hear it right when you first heard it. But in fact, you end up hearing a lot more that you didn't hear the first time around. A lot of people uh, say that you probably miss literally about 90% of the responses coming through a spirit box when you're listening to it live. And you really have to go back and listen to the recording to pick it up. Just like any other way that you're doing any sort of investigating and you have audio, you want to go back and always listen to it because you never know what you're going to hear. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and it's a little bit harder to decipher, as you said, with with the spirit box sometimes because of the static and everything. And and I think you develop an ear for it, like you you do with EVPs too. I mean, I I have trouble hearing them, even if they're anything but Class A. I won't, you know, you can play them for me three times, and I've got the hits, and on my ears just aren't listening to that. So it it may be a little bit more difficult too when like when you're playing a little bit later um, for to run it a couple times just so people can hear what they hear and then let's let's see what they hear this is my great experiment because everybody hears differently and if and i've noticed that if you tell somebody like when we're running evps that it says such and such you know hello how are you that's what people are going to hear you know so it's kind of neat to to not say something and then let them decipher what they hear and you know when when they get the right thing, it's very cool. It's very um, validating, isn't it? It, it is, and and it's absolutely you know correct that every the you know it's in the it's like the the listening to it is in the eye of the beholder. If you can, if you, if that makes any sense whatsoever, the idea that this is what I believe is being said in these recordings, it doesn't necessarily mean that is what. Um, that is what it is, because I think these things have to be open to interpretation. And as the person who recorded it, I think if you're going to put it out there, you have to be OK with people having different um, different ideas of what's being said, because if not, if you're just like, this is what it is, then I think you're not an investigator then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to form your own opinions and you have to stick to what you get and not be swayed by what somebody else tells you, that it was wrong, you know, because that's not what you heard and, and you know, they heard differently and 
maybe neither of them are right for that matter. Right. And, and, and just because like we play something and someone's like, Oh, that's not what it is. doesn't mean I'm going to agree with them, but I'm going to appreciate the fact that they have their own take on what they heard too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, again, technology has improved to the point where nobody has to fiddle with a radio anymore like a hack shack unless they want to. Because, I mean, our, you know, our friend Tim Shaw, he builds a lot of them on his own, you know, and, and he does. happily yeah. does it, you know. Um, but there's just, you know, there's all kinds of bright and shiny ghost boxes available that have all these bells and whistles been in, built in. And, um, you know, I, I guess my, my guess is, and I could be wrong, that... You probably use both hacked and modern boxes, um, but is making your own, will that work better for somebody? It's like, all right, let me just jump to witchcraft for a second. When we create our own spells, they work better if, than if we get them from someone else. So if you're making your own box, do you think that makes it more um, effective? I think that there's going to be people who, who definitely think so, um, and I, I I wouldn't disagree with that. Um, I don't. I wouldn't know how to make a box of my own because it's just not something that I'm personally built for. What I do believe, though, is you know, like like for example, the first spirit box that I owned, which is that SB7. I've been taking that with me all over the uh, United States, all over the world. Actually, I've taken it with me to the UK, um, and and I firmly believe when I'm doing, when I'm using it, it is an extension of my hand. It is part of me. It is the, the spirit is speaking through me and it's coming out through the spirit box. And that to me, I mean, I just get the chills when I hear the responses. I feel the energy coming through me. I do not ask it to use my energy, but I can feel it coming through me. And so I do think that, you know, I've had some people build me a couple boxes and I sent them like video of, of me using it and they're like oh i heard my name i heard my name again you know the, it's so i think that they feel like that there is a kind of a kinship to them and mm -hmm. you know i have i have about 30 some spirit boxes wow and and Sorry. uh yeah <laughs> yeah right this just goes to show what how uh odd dedicated I am. Um, yes <laughs> there's dedication and some of them I, i'll never use some of them are very specific some of them are you know they're they've been built for me they've been you know totally everything has been you know to my design and you know it's just some of those things that sometimes you want to use something like that sometimes you don't and uh you know it really depends on the situation and 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 what you get because some days i'll use um a really expensive spirit box and I'll get some really great responses and other days I'll use it and I'll get nothing but I'll pull out you know my SB7 and I feel like I get a lot more it's just really kind of what the room is like and what the energy in the room is like and your energy as well maybe too absolutely very much so you know as as I think all of us do I, I hope most of us do is like you know we we approach the situation with love and light we approach it with um, you know, positivity so that, you know, we, I don't, I don't want to talk to the, the negative spirits. That's not what I'm there for. And it's all about mindset too, isn't it? Yeah. And we can draw things to us without even realizing it. So yeah, you got to be careful when you're doing mm -hmm. stuff like that. Cause you know, you start giggling in your mind about, you know, get a picture of your mind about some dancing demon and Hey, you know, you're sending out a signal, maybe. <laughs> it's just, right. You, know. you never know. I mean, mm -hmm. and and sometimes it it's it gets. You know, it's it's sometimes it's too late when you realize what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, in all forms of divination, and and the ghost box, spirit box is one of them. Um, yeah. You have to be really careful. You have to go in with the right frame of mind. You have to go in with adequate knowledge, so as not to do something really boneheaded. Um, and you have to be careful with what you do because you are speaking to another realm and you don't know who's coming through. You don't trust everybody that's coming through. So, you know, you have to have not a wall around you, but you have to use your head and be very careful about who you're wishing to talk to and who you, you know, whatever. And, and all right, so when you're doing um, a spirit box sentence, now one of the big things that a lot of people hate and I'm one of them, is to bully a spirit into speaking. Right. You know, just, it, it, it's, it makes no sense to me. Um, right. So, have you had people, or do you know of people who do that with a spirit box as well? 
No, uh, because I don't, I don't want to hang around with people like that. Um, I think what, what you're going to hear in the second half hour, there was, um, there are two recordings that we weren't bullying anybody, but we were getting agitated because the location we were at was agitating us, and it was having an effect on all of us. And so it's not it's not a bully per se, but it's it's a more of a a force. Like we, what is going on here? What's happening? You know, what's your name? And you know, the responses there are kind of you, you'll hear that it feeds into that. Once again, mm-hmm. we were not you know being like you know how you you see it on some of the shows and stuff. But, I mean, this is about as far as I would get as far mm-hmm. as that sort of thing. And I don't do that. You know, that place had right. an effect on all of us. So this is going to be – you're going to kind of see. And I, once once I'm able to explain it a little bit more, um, it, hopefully it kind of brings a little bit more light into the situation that, that caused it. Yeah, because, I mean, what what you were doing then, you were having an emotional response, you know, because the, the atmosphere and everything was doing it rather than a, a, a logical way of – taking it because you you know got agitated so there it's a difference and and spirit will pick up on that they know the difference between emotion and logic and calm and panic and you know some of them have fun playing on it yeah so yeah they sure do (laughs) i mean i think i think that i think that's going to be absolutely evident in some of the stuff that I, i play tonight because that is exactly what happens is that it's almost like they're performing and they're giving you what you're asking for Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, spirits are just people that are in a different form now. And if, if they have big egos, they're on the other side. They did here, too, probably. You know, like I always say, nobody grows a halo and wings just because they passed over. Um, some idiot is an idiot there, too. And hopefully they'll learn Absolutely. in the next life. That's a terrible thing to say, but you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it it it. it we, when we're asking whether it's EVP and, you know, Bruce Tango's in the chat room, he knows, he, you know, he's the king of EVPs. Um, yeah. And he, you know, very well that, that what you put out is what you're going to get back. And yeah. um, it's how you deal with it. And, and sometimes, you know, and people get angry when they don't get a response or they don't think they're going to get a response. You know, with EVP, you, you have, you have to listen after the fact, but, there are just people that are like so desperate to have one that they just kind of force the issue and get frustrated because they're not hearing it. You know, they don't mm-hmm. want to wait till later. Well, then you shouldn't be doing an EVP session. Um, you know, patience is that virtue. But and, and yeah. I would I would also I would also say too, along with that, you know, when you're when you're doing a spirit box and you um you you don't think it, you're getting any responses. Um, this is where you do want to listen back because so every so much so, and I, I would say especially the first one I'm going to play after the fact, and when we get back from the break, was something I it was a session I didn't think I get in, got any responses at all for, and then I got some of the best responses I've ever got, I've ever received, and uh, you know you, that's why you got to listen back to this stuff because you you never know, and the worst is when you listen back and you hear like a, a voice, just a small voice says help, you know, through the spirit box. It's like, I missed that. I completely missed that. And mm-hmm. someone needed my help. You know, that's, that's the stuff that that's kind of tough. Yeah, no, it is. And, and I think, um, geez, I just got sidetracked. Um, <laughs> so I can go on to the question from the chat room and give you that one instead. <laughs> Um, Sherry wants to know, um, does a female voice mean a female spirit coming through necessarily? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think that in, in on occasion, a number of places, I, we went to um, a Masonic Lodge in uh, Newport, Kentucky, which isn't too far from Bobby Mackey's Music World. Mm-hmm. Uh, this place was very dark, um, and we did an investigation there, and uh, we were getting a child's voice. And, you know, just like I said, I'm, I'm intuitive. Um, I was with, with, with a psychic medium. And the first thing I said was, you are not a little girl, are you? And I find mm-hmm. it funny, at least in my experience, when you kind of call the spirit out on something, more often than not, you get them saying, yeah, you're right, I'm not that. And that's what we got. Mm-hmm. And um, it, was, it was very much like, yeah, you're not what you say you are. Um, and especially when it's kids, when I get a child voice through the spirit box, mm-hmm. my, my antenna kind of goes up almost immediately uh, just because I just want to be very careful about that. Um, and sometimes, you know, we will get 
a response from like even like a woman or something, and it sounds like a, a male voice, but I think it's because they're picking up some of the broadcasts from the radio. And, you know, they're just kind of globbing on the best that they can to be able to try to respond to us. That's my theory, at least. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say I wouldn't necessarily equate a female voice to being female. Okay, yeah. And and even in real life, um, you know, sometimes on if we hear somebody's voice, we mistake it for the opposite sex. So, yeah, that, that yeah. can happen. Let me ask you, the older boxes, did they all record at the same time or did they start out with you just like listening and hearing it yourself you know i don't i basically even now i never like if there's one like there's the, what we call the s box which is available through ghost stop and it's it's more like kind of the kind of the rhythm of the old uh radio shack hacks in terms of how it sounds i think uh you know that has the recording device in it I like to have a separate recording uh, device that's separate from the box, so I can I can record the uh, the um, ambient atmosphere. I can I can record. I have more control over it. So I personally always use a uh, a separate recording device for it. Sometimes maybe th up to three of them, just so I have different types and different sort of opportunities to record. I even have a reel-to-reel -reel tape player that I will bring and I will record uh, what's going on on, on analog reel-to-reel -reel tape. Mm, that's a good idea. All right, one more question before we get to the break, and it might be a quick answer. But, um, you know, we were talking about the ghost boxes being called by many names, spirit box and all that. And for some reason, ovulus popped into my head. Now, is an ovulus considered a ghost box or does it have to be like a radio-based box? In my opinion, I look at it as a radio-based box. Someone else can come along and tell me that I am absolutely wrong about that. That's just my opinion. But I think that the ovulus, would you would consider that part of that ITC uh, method of communication because you're getting responses from a piece of electronics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I mean, they're, they're fascinating. Um, I, I only have experience with one, but we were up at um, this house next to the Manson murder house and oh. um, somebody turned on the ovulus and nobody said anything, you know, we just put it on. And the first thing that came out of it was murder. <laughs> so were, I was you at kind of, were you at David Oman's house? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. All right. And, yeah. And so, you know, I mean, I was kind of impressed cause you know, it was just a, a friend that brought an ovulus and just turned it on. You know, let's see what happens here. You know, and the first word murder. And I went, Oh, that thing works. I had never seen one before. <laughs> so it's just like, okay. I mean, I know they have certain amount of programmed words in them or whatever, but that was, it could have been coincidence, but it kind of made me go, Holy crap. I mean, Holy cow. That's really good. <laughs> So, I've had any, I've had yeah. really good responses and really crappy ones. You know, it's like some you're in a room and all of a sudden it just says bread and you're like, what? You know, what does that mean? <laughs> but then I've also been at Deadwood, South Dakota, where I got in an hour 108 responses that were all uh, either uh, Native American or religious responses. Mm. Interesting. See? Yeah. All that stuff. It just it. This is the fascination of all this, doing all this kind of thing, because things you, you expect don't happen, expect the unexpected, and that doesn't mean it's all bad. I mean, it really good things happen when you least expect them. So, Absolutely. yeah, it's very cool. All right. Well, we're going to be taking a quick break, and when we come back, like the man said, we're going to be listening to some of his favorite Ghost Box recordings. So during the break, though, if you're there... Um, those of you who have any headsets handy, you might want to grab them and plug yourself in so you can hear the audio files better. Um, otherwise, we'll be back in just two minutes. Don't go away. There's more Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks right after these important messages. Are you haunted by shadow people in the middle of the night? Do you secretly love all things creepy and spooky, enjoying ghost stories and horror fiction from the best storytellers? Do you have a true ghost experience you want to share, but no one will believe you? If yes, listen to the professionals on What Are You Afraid of? Power Paranormal Show, Friday nights at 9 p.m. on ParaX Radio and at www.whatareyouafraidofpodcast.com. What, what are, are you afraid, you afraid of, of on ParaX? Our creepy and demented hosts are on call to provide you with all your spooky needs with true ghost stories, interviews, indie music, and new horror fiction. 
We are ready to scare you. Para X. From Haunted Road Media comes an exciting new novel by author Marla Brooks. Soul Connection, a deadly obsession. Two lost souls ripped apart by murder in another century find each other again in the present only to discover that the murderer has followed them through time. Can their love save them or will history repeat itself? Find out in this captivating new novel by Marla Brooks. Soul Connection, a deadly obsession. Available now on Amazon.com and at BarnesandNoble.com. Demons. Vampires. Werewolves. Skinwalkers. All of this and more. Sunday nights at midnight. On the Staring into the Abyss radio show. Come. Get lost with us. Welcome back to Stirring the Cauldron. Once again, here's your host, Marla Brooks. Hey, welcome back, everybody. I'm here with my guest, Greg Bakken, and we're going to be listening to some of his Ghost Box audio files. So, Greg, since you and Sarge have worked together before on this, I'm going to kind of turn the mic over to you so you can introduce each one, give a little bit of backstory, and do what you do. Do you want uh, people to try to figure it out for themselves first, or do you want me to give uh, a more of a, a description? Um, I would like to see if people are reacting from the chat room first. I mean, give a description of, of you know, where you were and what was going on kind of thing. Absolutely. And then, and then let's see, you know, if, if they hear and what they hear, because um, there's a 30-second delay. So, you know, but yeah, let, let's try that and see what happens on one or two of them and see how it goes. That sounds good. So the first one is going to be uh, when I was at the Morris Jamel Mansion in New York, and uh, we we went there. My friend Robert and I went there really just to check the place out. Someone said that it was a good place to go. I actually saw that it's been on some shows and whatnot. And uh, we went there and, and just brought some paranormal equipment with. We didn't do like an investigation, but I did ask uh, the people there if they would mind if I did a spirit box session there. There was no, nobody around. They said, sure. We did some stuff there. Then we went outside. Um, Robert, who was with me, he was having uh, some problems throughout uh, the, the, the throughout the visit. Uh, it seemed like that something was kind of agitating him when he was there. House did feel a little oppressive. And uh, this was one of those examples that I did a spirit box session outside, right outside the house. Didn't feel like I got anything. And then I got this response. So, Sarge, could you do uh, MN012 for me, please? So, All right. I don't know. We'll give him a couple seconds to see if, if they heard anything, because like I said, there's a 30-second delay. Now, that one, to me, I heard pretty clearly um, when I first listened to it, So, because I think it, it had probably less uh, white noise than some of the yeah. other ones. Yeah. So, uh, that was, yeah, go ahead. And I was going to say, and the thing about this one was once I figured out what was being said, and this is a full sentence, you know, getting a full sentence is really pretty exciting um, because it's it's something and it's relevant to uh, the people around us. And it was uh, it, it, it just is one of those that once I heard it, I stood up and I walked around the house for like uh, two, uh, two hours, you know, because it was really exciting. I do see that um, that uh, someone responded on uh, the uh chat room calling it just junk which is fine but uh the thing is is that there is uh there is a response there and uh, yeah, look up look above the message that's half, yes. the, half of it there it, yeah exactly Patty. good ears exactly Patty. but let's yeah let's play it kathy said let's play it one more time so they can show okay tell them what it is <laughs> and then we can play it and they can hear it okay so what it is is 
like I said, Robert was having some issues. Uh, you know, some something was was kind of affecting him there, and you know, he just it wasn't a big deal, but he just he, he mentioned it. Um, and then uh, his name came through a couple times on the spirit box that day, but this one said, "Go home, Robert." One more time, Sarge, please. Go. Yeah, see? Now that I heard it, I didn't hear the Robert the first time, but I did this time. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting and it's pretty, you know, it's it's pretty neat, I think. <clears throat> and you know, it's 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 very intelligent. And we also got who I believe Eliza Jamel who is the own was the owner of the house um, after some, a certain amount of time. She actually uh, told me to stop it because I was doing a bunch of stuff down in the kitchen and just get this very terse um, woman who's just just says stop it. You know, she's just really <laughs> angry, and uh, that that's that's fun. So we got a lot of stuff that day. Mm-hmm. Uh, should, we, should we move on to the the next one? Yes, please. Uh, so the next one was. Uh, the next one was done at the Vliska Axe Murder House. You know, I, I go to all the glamorous places, I guess. And that's one of those <laughs> things that when you go there, you're kind of like, uh, I probably shouldn't have been here in a sense because it's very um, it's it's a very dark place. And I always call it the STD of the paranormal because it's not so much even anymore, in my opinion, of what happened there back in 1912 when eight people were murdered by someone hiding in the house by an axe. It's more now that people go into this place and they kind of do their own conjuring. They do their own thing. And the spirits, those whatever they conjure there, never leaves. This place, mm-hmm. in my opinion, is very, very dark. And this is one of those situations where I heard, like, we were getting agitated. And I just wanted to know who is talking to us. And I just kept asking, you know, you, you'll hear my name. And then I just say, Okay, you know my name, but what is your name? And at the very end of the recording, you get a name that is um, very interesting. Let's just put it that way. So, Sarge, can we play MN015, please? You said my name, what is your name? You said my name, what is your name? So I'd be interested to know if anyone picked up uh, that name that's said at the end. Okay, uh, yours came in loud and clear to me. Yeah that that was um, that was really interesting, uh, and at for for the longest time I wasn't sure if that was um, from the spirit box or another uh, another uh, like outside of the spirit box. No one mm-hmm. said anything, but. Um, it's interesting. So it's I see a lot of names coming through. None of them is what I'm hearing. Um, do you want me to say the name? Um, yeah, I think everybody's through. So what yeah. we got, what we believe we have um, is uh, when I say, you know my name, what's your name? And the response is Satan. Mm. And uh, it is certainly, I just want to clarify that that I don't believe it's Satan. I do not believe that um, he showed up at Villisca, Iowa <laughs> to give me the runaround. Um, and, uh, you know, that's that's really uh, what it kind of comes down to is, you know, it's we we know that this stuff, like, there, like you just said at the first half hour, there is going to always be something, you know, somebody, if you're a jerk in real life, you're probably going to be a jerk in the afterlife. And if we're all there kind of scared about what's going on, what's going to scare you the most when you ask for someone's name? It's like, 
oh, okay, we're going to we're going to really up this. And it's like, no, it's not Satan. Mm-hmm. Could we Sarge, could we play that again? MN015, please. You said my name. What is your name? Okay, I heard it then. Yeah. 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 And, you know, what I'm listening for, too, is not just like the, like, you know, something that kind of phonetically sounds that way. Like, I can hear the S when they say Satan, you know? Mm -hmm. I can hear that. Um, and you know, what I, what I find most kind of chilling about the recording is just the kind of the nonchalant way he says Satan, you know, it's Mm -hmm. very, it's not, there's nothing there that is like, um, like, like, like evil or anything. It's just like, who's, who am I talking to? Satan. Okay. Move on. Mm -hmm. Well, I just started laughing when, when I heard that because MJ in chat wrote Jesus. (laughs) So I'm thinking, okay, there's the yin and the yang, you know? Yep. Yeah, yep, exactly. Jesus, and there, there comes I think, Satan. I think it would be pretty awesome if Jesus came through. Um, yeah. Not yet. But, you know, once again, like like I said about Satan, they probably have better things to do than visit Greg Bakken. You know, I'm, that's kind of where I'm at with this. But mm-hmm. you never know. Maybe someday. Yeah. Um, so the next one is going to be what we call the Soap Factory in uh, St. Anthony, Maine, Minnesota. It's this uh, this place that uh, just had been around for such a long time and uh, it just ended up getting a lot of spirits with it. It's Unfortunately, it's now closed to us um, but this is from what we call the Sanjean spirit box. The last two are from the SB7 which is the manufactured one. This one is from uh, a Sanjean which is basically a shack hack and so we were in the basement it's called the haunted basement so you know you're hoping you're gonna get something good there and we were just probably about four of us were standing around it's a little dark in there and we saw something kind of run between all of us like just like about knee level or something like that that's what we what we saw and i had the spirit box going and i i said to me you know this looks like a dog to me and so the question i ask is is this somebody's dog and this is the response we get. This, uh, Sarge, could you play MN062, please? Is somebody's dog here? Is somebody's dog here? Mm. Okay, I heard it, but I can't make it out. It's a man's voice, though. Interesting, because to me... And and this is the funny thing about this stuff. To mm-hmm. me, when I heard it the first time, it absolutely, to me, was a very, very clear response and a very, you know, it's very intelligent to the question I was asking, um, the, the, at least the way that I'm interpreting it. Um, so the question was, um, you know, is somebody's dog here was the question I asked. And the response was, that's my dog. That's what I picked up. Is hmm. that's my dog? Um, so, Sarge, could we play MN zero six two one more time, please? Is somebody's dog here? Hmm. Not not doing it though for you, huh? No, I, I'm I'm hearing like one syllable. But, Interesting. You know, some people slur when they talk. <laughs> I don't know. I just heard like Meh, kind of thing it's, like that. It's funny because I, I find that to be probably one of my favorite responses of wow. of all of them I ever got because to me it's very clear. Though I've had heard, I've had people say to me, "It sounds like that's my frog," and I'm like, "No, <laughs> I no, like that. no, it's I don't think it is." <laughs> <It's> my, <laughs> Is that your dog? No, it's my frog. You know, yeah, no. <laughs> like, that would be some hell of a big frog. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, you know, name. maybe maybe it's a dead frog and it manifests itself as uh, something you know bigger because it's it's scared of us or something. I I, I don't I don't know. Um, we move back to Velisca, and uh, this was early on in our in our you know I, you can't even really call it an investigation. Yeah, we we have the material going and we have the equipment going, but. You're not going to affect anything there. You're not going to clear the place. You're not going to be able to help spirits move on there. This place is is really somehow locked down. And um, what what we got here is 
just I, I once again for some reason that night I was really wanting to know whose people's names were. So you're going to hear me ask what you know what's your name who are you because we just wanted to know. Mm-hmm. But we get this random uh, message that comes through. It's it's um, it's said a couple times and it, it there has there's some relevance to it to Velisca itself. So uh, Sarge, could you please play MN zero six three, please? We're still looking for a name. Give us a name. Six people killed. That's what this just said. Six people killed. Killed. for a name. Give us a name. Six people killed. That's what this just said. Six people killed. Killed. So, a couple things there. I, I, I say what I think it says right there, because we heard it live, and at Velisca, eight people were killed, not six, which uh, is kind of interesting. Uh, but also what I figure out, what, what I find very interesting listening back to it is when I tell them that it says six people killed, you can almost, and I remember this at the time, I could hear, I could feel the sickness that comes up. I mean, I actually got physically ill mm-hmm. when uh, that happened because it was, it, it just really hit home where we were and what was happening there. And uh, it, it just... What you don't really hear on this, and uh, if, if you didn't hear it on there, because it says six people killed, um, I, I, that's fine. Um, but when you hear it and you're hearing it with headphones, you can hear it actually repeating a couple times. Like someone's saying it multiple times, and I find that really, uh, really chilling, actually. Mm-hmm. Like it just keeps saying it again and again. Um, so Sarge, uh, would you mind playing MN063 one more time, please? We're still looking for a name. Give us a name. Six people killed. That's what this just said. Six people killed. Killed. Mm, I heard it. Yeah, I heard it more than once then. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a. I think it's a pretty chilling uh, recording, to be honest. Yeah. Um, because it's 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 pretty serious, um, and we mm-hmm. got a number of uh, recordings from that night that um, I just. I mean, I haven't even listened to the whole thing to be honest, because it was not. It was not a good night. And mm-hmm. you can even hear in my voice, you know, give us a name, you know, just I'm just it's kind of what I was talking about earlier. You're just kind of getting you're not trying to be a bully, but you're getting aggressive. And it's like when I hear mm-hmm. it, I'm like, well, that's not me. That's not how I investigate. That's not how I speak <laughs> the spirits. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 uh, very, very bizarre. Um, yeah. Going to move on uh, to something not so, you know, Satan-y, you know, let's let's kind of keep it a little <laughs> bit lighter. Uh, and and we went and investigated at a place called the PNA Hall in what's called Northeast Minneapolis. It's a very old Polish area. My parents were brought up there. I'm Polish, and uh, this uh, this place actually was the place where my parents had their wedding anniversary about 55 years ago. And uh, so I, I didn't get them at at this uh, place, but be, when we were interviewing somebody who um, had worked there for years and years and years. She was telling us about this woman who used to work there who kind of kind of cleaned and kind of kept things moving there. Her name was Mrs. Sarno. And Mrs. Sarno was always a fixture of this, of these, like when they had the big Polish weddings, she'd be at the receptions helping out, 
very much a part of the of the place and she had passed away a number of years ago and uh rita had said to me you know i wonder if i wonder if you'd ever pick up uh mrs sarno and uh going through all the spirit box stuff which once again i didn't think we had a whole lot going on that night uh going through and we picked up this um sarge could you play mn0079 please Mm-hmm. That's class A. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's pretty impressive, here. isn't it? Yes, it is. I mean, I I love it, and that was once again, you know, it's just going through the the recordings. Not ex- I, I didn't expect that. We didn't even ask for her. You know, we didn't ask for like Mrs. Sarno. Are you here? I mean, she just and I run into this all the time when I'm doing spirit box work. Is like some people just say their names. They just want you to know that they're there. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I just I feel bad that I didn't pick up on Miss Sarno's um, uh, stuff because it it just it would have been nice to have more of a conversation with her. Uh, Sarge, could you play zero zero seven nine one more time, please? <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's... Sybil is is very clear. The Sarno is a little bit not so clear, but yeah. I mean, you can, yeah. you can tell. And you're getting you're getting some of those those words. You're starting to get you know the the uh, enunciation and stuff. And that's the stuff I really like. You know, one of the things that really frustrate me is my name is Greg, and it's one syllable. So if you um, if if Greg comes through, it could very well just be a glitch or something. It very well could not be my name. So I often think, oh, was that my name? Probably not. Something like Marla, you know, if you get Marla come through, that's pretty cool because that's that's hard to, you know, not you know, to fabricate. Yeah, it's or not a common get... name really either, but Exactly. Yeah. And um, you know, I my my friend Anne, her name has come through. That is not a common name. Mm-hmm. So that's the stuff that I'm looking for. You know, unfortunately I have, you know, the you know, Greg. Uh so you're not gonna <laughs> get a whole lot from that. But yeah, I get Marla or Anne or Robert, you know, that stuff is what I really love. I have one more. Um and I'm not really sure what this is, to be honest. Um this was the the first night I got the San Jean, the Shack Hack radio box, radio radio box, uh, spirit box. And when I'm um, when I it was the first time I used it, and it was just recently after my dad had passed away. So it's not even something I'm asking about, but this uh, little girl's voice c- comes through, and um, it's. It's just really, really uh, something I, I've, I wish I knew what, what was the full sentence being said. Uh, Sarge, can you do MN0088, please? Do you have anything to say to me that you'd like? Do you have anything to say to me that you'd like? Now, that one, if, for those who hadn't got any of the ones prior, this one I think is going to be really difficult. Um, but you hear... You hear a little girl's voice, Marla. Do you hear the little girl's voice? I heard the voice. I didn't. I couldn't make out what she was saying, but I did definitely hear a voice. So what I'm hearing from it is a little girl voice saying, "Your father wants." And then I interrupt it, which really frustrates me. I do this on a number of occasions, actually. I think anyone using Spirit Box does this because sometimes you don't know when you're getting a response. And so I break I break that, you know, so as soon as you hear this little girl, kind of a, a whispery sort of little girl, you know, your father wants. And, and then I'm like, can someone come through or whatever? So I kind of ruined that. But uh, Sarge, can you play zero zero eight eight? Can you do it two times, please? Do you have anything to say to me that you'd like? Do you have anything to say to me that you'd like? So, yeah, it's it's really and and I find it it's kind of sentimental to me cuz I wonder is it is it is that for me? Is that a message for me? Is that a message from somebody telling me saying I'm talking about my dad? It's it's mm-hmm. something that it's it's kind of a mystery. You know, it's 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 that's what makes it really uh kind of fun cuz sometimes these responses are mysteries. You just don't know what some of it means sometimes and then sometimes you'll get a response 
not know what it means, and then later it you you find out what the full message was for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, the whole process is amazing, and and I'll just tell it really quick because we're going to have to start to wrap. But the first time that somebody played one um, on somebody's show, I don't remember where or when it was. Anyway, but. But they said, you know, they were a little bit doubtful about some of the responses they were getting and everything. And somebody said, what color shirt am I wearing? And the answer came back, orange. Mm -hmm. And whoever asked the question, it was an orange shirt. So, you know, that that was pretty telling that it wasn't, I mean, okay, in in a perfect world, it, it may just been coincidence that something on that radio said orange. But... Not not likely. I mean, I don't think it was coincidence. It was pretty cool. Absolutely, it's 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 a lot of fun. It's it's really incredible. And yes, some of the stuff that you can pick up, just I mean, it just blows me away sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Well, I want to thank you for for bringing all that stuff in, and and please come back. Um, I would love to. It's fun to listen to. And why don't you tell everybody where they can find you? What's going on with you? Your radio show, which we haven't mentioned yet. Go for it. Well, thank you. Um, I do a radio show every Wednesday night at uh, 8 p.m. Central and 9 p.m. Eastern called Ghost Box Radio on uh, the KCUR uh, radio network. That's www.kcurradio.com. And uh, right now I'm on a hiatus, but I return on uh, the 12th. And I'm going to have on someone that's been on your show, Barry Strom, yeah, um, and we're going to be talking, and, and hopefully he'll be doing some channeling for us. So I'll be back on the twelfth at eight p.m. Central, and then I'm just on Facebook. Um, you know, I, I just uh, if you want to reach out to me on Facebook, please do. I have a Facebook page for Pair of Friends events, and I also have if you want to hear more of my Spirit Box material, that's over at uh, www.mn-ghostbox. Dot O-R-G. So, you know, we have, I have more stuff up there, a lot more. Hmm. And there you went. Hmm. All right. Well, we do have to run. And, um, Greg, thank you again, if you can hear me, for being my guest and bringing along all those audio files. And I want to thank everybody um, listening in with both ears and headsets today. (laughs) And um, until next time, everybody, blessed be and merry meet again. Good night. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Please join us again next week at the same time for another great guest and more Cauldron Stirring. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2019. The Mysterioso March by Kevin McLeod is licensed through incompotech.com. <laughs>